Okay, it is October the 29th, Sunday evening, almost an hour after the weekly open. Let's go ahead and run through the market outlook and plans for the week ahead. So let's go ahead and start off with our news events. This week, we actually have something to worry about. On Wednesday, we have the FOMC. Apart from that, there's a couple events here and there, but definitely the FOMC is going to overshadow everything. So I do anticipate that um, per my normal weekly schedule, um, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday will probably be my primary trading days. Um, with the FOMC being the climax of that. Um, so definitely anticipate some classic whipsaw action um, before likely trend continuation. So um, let's go ahead and get into the Bitcoin rundown. Uh, let's start off with our time frame. Um, so as it stands, <clears throat> we've seen strong trend continuation as we bounce from the yearly VWAP overlap. And um, basically what I see moving forward is that um, with a really strong impulse, um, it's really uncommon for... Uh, price to immediately reverse. So I do think that we're going to likely start to hit resistance in the not so distant future. However, um, I don't think that uh, expecting this to just V back down from once it came um, is very smart. I think that that's incredibly unlikely. So what is the most likely scenario is that price will continue to drift up. Um, so something like continuing to drift up and uh, eventually hitting resistance. So once we get into the 20, you know, 37 and 38K, um, this is definitely a significant resistance. Um, I would say that the kind of the final resistance point is up in the 44K region, which is the 20, um, 21 VWAP. But uh, I don't really think we, we need to worry about that too much. Um, we have really strong composite overlaps, which I'll show you really quickly here. Um, around 30K, uh, 37 to 38K is incredibly strong resistance right now. Um, the most notable is going to be the uh, March, February, and January 2022 composite that's untested. Um, so that's the major resistance moving forward. So really how I expect this to play out is that um, any any door, sort of dips that we see should get bought up aggressively. Um, we'll look at this in on detail on the VWAP chart in a moment, but essentially this is, you know, representing strong initiative from buyers um, and is definitely a void on the volume profile. So we expect this kind of region to serve as strong support in the time being, um, basically the highs of this. So moving forward, if there are any dips, um, especially like going into this week, if there's any dips, maybe on the FOMC day in particular, that would probably line up really good. If there are any dips moving forward, um, you know, moving into the voids and moving into some of the VWAP overlaps that we'll cover later, um, those are definitely key areas to, to be looking to buy um, to see upwards continuation. So I think um, basically, you know, from a risk to reward standpoint, if you start to see acceptance uh, you know, below, like, you know, in back below the into the 33s into the 32k region, then, you know, the bull thesis is probably dead for the time being. But I think that that's, you know, like I said, incredibly unlikely, we could potentially see some dips into this region. And if we do, um, you want to buy them to target up towards the 36 37k region, um, targeting 38k as the kind of final resistance point. Um, so if we delete this really quickly, what I kind of expect overall to take place is that um, we should drift up whether we just you know like the past couple of Sunday and Mondays have just been strong buying right off the opens for the weekly um, So if we get that, you know, we could probably just drip straight up um, The other scenario right is us trading down But ultimately I think that regardless of what happens it's going to resolve upwards and you know, we're going to see upwards continuation So you definitely want to anticipate that from the upwards continuation whether we go down or up first um, you know, is basically a coin flip. I can't predict what the flows are going to be. But I do think that eventually we're going to hit some sort of wall up in this region and see the distributive range. Um, every impulse that we've had all year long has resulted in a distributive range um, before we see a pullback and continuation. So I think that we'll likely see some sort of distributive range up, you know, in the 36, 37, potentially all the way up towards the 38K. And then from there, we're going to be, um, you know, trying to hedge and target, um, you know, by the next by the dip zone. So as far as I'm concerned, um, the key kind of key area to be paying attention to is going to be the mid thirties right now, right? So basically 31 down to 30 K is going to be really strong support right now. Um, we can highlight there's, there's numerous overlaps, um, whether we, um, talk about anything from the high volume node right here. Um, we have the current year's VWAP. We have the current quarterly. I think that, you know, if this plays out how I expect it with this distributive range, by the time um, we do get this pullback, the current yearly VWAP will have drifted up as well. Um, so there's going to be a lot of support here. Um, we can delete these things and look at the composite structuring as well. Um, from a composite standpoint too, we're going to have support up in this region as well. 
Um, so there's, re there's really just numerous overlaps in the mid 30K region to expect that to hold a support. So in short, the TLDR on the higher time frame outlook is that I think that we're going to continue to drift up. Eventually, we're going to hit, start to hit real supply and demand will start to dry up. We'll probably see a distributive range. And from there, we'll probably pull back into a new fresh demand zone um, and then likely see trend continuation. So um, it is important, like we talked about on the Friday stream, that... Um, you know, by the time we get this by the dip zone, right, it's almost the end of the year. So we will be transitioning into 2024. Um, as the year transitions over, it's very common for directional, you know, flows and trends to shift. Um, so we do want to approach 2024 with a little bit of a fresh mind uh, all year long. It's been by the dip, but um, we do need to be mindful of the fact that as we approach 2024, um, that we could potentially see a shift. Um, but also, I mean, we could just continue with the trend, but it's just really important as you go into the, into the new year, um, to not be overly committed to the bias that's worked for you. Um, it's very common for, um, flows to have a, have a switch as you, uh, shift years. So that's pretty much it for the higher time frame. Um, again, TLDR on Bitcoin. Um, I'm not going to rush into any long trades. If I get a really good long setup, I definitely want to take it and I probably will bet very hard on it. My main focus on Bitcoin though, is just managing my spot right now. Um, cause I've been fully, you know, I, I've had a, a, a full spot Bitcoin position going all year. So my main priority is controlling the risk on that. And, um, if I get a, you know, a signal to hedge, then definitely going to be hedging out on futures. Um, but apart from that, my, my main pri you know, priority for active trading this week is going to be on chick coins. Um, so let's go ahead and run through some altcoins here and there. For more information, check out the Paragon group with the link below, where I cover everything from how I trade to how you can develop your own style. Definitely a key one. You know, basically the more the moral of the story across all these altcoins are going to be if you get a significant dip into support, buy that. Um, that's going to be the same. Every single chart that we're going to cover is going to be the same exact um, kind of idea, right? So TRB, um, I don't think that you're going to get a steep pullback like this, but if you do see a pullback towards you know, the $70 region, um, that would be an absolute gift. And I would definitely be looking to buy that. I think that probably what happens more likely is that TRB gives a much more shallow dip before trading up again. Um, whether or not TRB is done, um, the, the key thing that I would be looking for is that it's probably going to trade up and sweep these highs one more time if it is done. So if TRB is going to trend down, it needs to sweep these highs first, most certainly. Um, so if we get a kind of a more shallow dip, I could see a scenario where we, you know, um, come up and trade into these highs. But even that, even a shallow dip is still a massive move, right? That's like a 30% move. So, um, you know, again, I, I have the alert set for the larger move. Um, if it does a more shallow dip and starts to trend up again, I'll probably just prioritize scalping it. TRB has been like my favorite coin to scalp in, in, in Q4. So, you know, I, I'm all for it, honestly. Um, looking at WorldCoin really quickly. WorldCoin definitely looks like it's good to continue to trade up. Um, VWAP structuring is bullish across the board. So if there's any sort of dip into the 170 region, like we had talked about on the Friday stream, I, I want to buy this, um, you know, if I see something like this. Um, Link and INJ have been the market leaders recently. Um, so they're definitely really tough to play trend continuation on now because they're undoubtedly overextended. Um, so if we zoom in like on link, for example, the kind of key thing I was looking for was if I could get kind of like a more shallow pullback, um, into this kind of low volume node area, um, which is going to overlap with the quarterly VWAP if I, band, if I could get something like that, then that would be a trend continuation play for me potentially. Um, the rough thing with these kind of things is that when you look at this, you know, you look at this thing on like a four hour or a 12 hour and you go, wow, this thing is like extremely overextended. Um, I don't want to buy this because it's so overextended, um, or you even worse, you think I want to short this, but when you zoom out and look at this thing, this thing link just broke out of a year and a half long range. So shorting this is absolute suicide. Uh, many of us need to learn that trial by fire, right? Uh, the, a man learns best when he gets burned. Um, so if you've been trading a long time, you've tried to short this and you've learned that lesson already. Um, the only play for me on something like Link is to buy a shallow dip and and hope that it you know plays out trend continuation. The only reason why I would see it wouldn't 
um, play out as trend continuation is if Bitcoin goes into pullback mode, which I don't see happening right now. I think that Bitcoin will continue to trend up. So therefore, any sort of shallow pullback on something that looks like this is probably for buying. I know as crazy as that sounds, something that is, you know, broke out and went up, like how much did this thing come out from its breakout? You know, 35, 40%. Um, but it will probably continue to go higher. Um, similar story with INJ, except INJ pretty much already did that. INJ um, did a really, you know, built its range and you know traded down into the range low and then, you know, broke out again. Um, so with INJ, it would be a similar story where if I saw a shallower pullback into the 13s or maybe into the 12s that I would probably want to buy it. But INJ is probably not going to give me a setup, to be honest. Like Link still kind of has the makings of that shallow setup um, on the table where it could do something like this. And I would, I would want to play it. Um, I don't think that INJ is going to give me that, but uh, I'm going to keep it on the list either way. So that's pretty much it for the week, guys. Uh, that that covers everything. I, I don't. I'm not going to sit here and say it's going to be a big week, but I do think it should be a relatively active week. I do think that Monday, uh, Tuesday, and Wednesday should be good trading days, um, and then probably yeah, probably Thursday and Friday will probably be a little bit slower. Um, we'll probably follow that standard, um, you know, kind of routine that we've had recently. The first half of the week being hype, going into the news week, you know, the news event, and then probably um, some of the volatility dying off a bit here and there. So. That's pretty much it for the week, guys. Um, good luck, and uh, I'll see you out there. Cheers.